All right, so once again, we are here at this high performance home. We are past our rough inspection and we are here to do the duct leakage test, which we like doing on the rough end side before everything gets covered up. So the goal is to get as low of a leakage rate number as we possibly can. And so you want to eliminate some common and pretty significant sources of air leakage, which most of us know when it comes to equipment is access panels. And so what I will do prior to the test is just take some regular painter's tape and tape up all these access panels. That tape can be removed very easily later on, but for the time being, that tape does a very good job sealing up uh, any kind of sources of, of air leak. And of course, we can't forget our Santa Fe dehumidifier. We want to tape up that filter access as well. Everybody has their own way of doing things, but uh, what I like to do as soon as we put in a boot on a rough end, take something like rigid foam board or uh, spare uh, wood, even cardboard, and mastic it around the boot to cover it. This not only protects the boot and keeps it clean from sawdust, because we all know that electricians make a ton of sawdust and then never sweep up after themselves. And that sawdust, if you're not careful, will find its way into the boot. And this also seals up the boot later for the duct test, which is what we're doing today. So sometimes we gotta get a little creative with how we seal up our openings, but the goal here is to seal up any and all openings in the duct system. Here's the blower door setup that the HERS Raider is using. Uh, he uses, um, equipment from Retrotech and essentially we just hook up the duct to one of the returns that's the easiest to get to and we're going to hook up that um, tubing to the fan or to the controller and that tubing samples one of the nearby ducts uh, so once we can sample the static pressure that fan will come on it'll depressurize the ducts and we'll figure out how much CFM it takes to depressurize it to get to 25 pascals. So I'm here with Aaron Martin of Green Door Energy. He's going to be doing our duct test. He's a HERS Raider on the job um, for the builder that we're working with, which is Gary Silverstein, Silverstein Construction. And we're going to be doing the duct test. Now our goal to get under 5% is, what would you say, 160 CFM? Correct. And that's at 25 pascals, right? Correct. And then to get under 3%, it's 96. 96. So we'd really like to get under 96 or if we can, so we'll see what happens. So we are running a little bit higher than what we really wanted to. We're running about 136, 137 CFM at 25 pascals, which equals a little over 4% duct leakage. It's, we'll pass code, but it's not as low as what I personally want as the contractor. One of the things that I found was that our dehumidifier down in the crawl space is leaking a lot of air and so we're gonna have to spend some time and seal those leaks up and then uh, we'll look around for some other possible causes of leaks and then this will get retested on final so hopefully our final number will be considerably better than this one so one reason why I'm not too incredibly worried about having a 4% duct leakage test result is because these ducts are all in the conditioned space so the little bit that is leaking is leaking into the condition space. This section of ducts right here that feed our upstairs uh, supply and return, just this one little section right here is the only ducts that are in the unconditioned space. Here's what I'm talking about with the leakage coming from the DQ. I was able to hear and actually feel air leaking from gaps like this. And just anywhere where two pieces of metal come together, this entire box is air passing through it and so um, I'm gonna have to go back and seal cracks like this before our next test at final and hopefully we'll have a little bit better number so I'm not trying to throw shade on Santa Fe they make the best dehumidifier out there um, but just inherently if you're trying to go for a low duct leakage test probably in hindsight what I should have done is just leave the uh, duct work that connects to our supply plenum unhooked and uh, hook that up after the duct test but this is a more realistic um, example of what the duct leakage will actually be once the system is started up so that's why I went ahead and hooked it back up so all in all I'm still satisfied with just over 4% duct leakage I'm a little bummed that we didn't break our previous record of 1.8% but that's incredibly hard to do and hopefully we'll get a little bit better number on the final once we seal up some of the places that we were able to find during the rough end duct test. So again, this is why we do two duct tests, one during rough end or right after rough end and the other one at final, so that we have a chance to fix some of the leaks that we find and then test again.